Welcome to our Sunday show, our English programme uh, here in Les Sables de Lone. It is the 22nd of November uh, and uh, the, this morning th the uh, news was really about Alex Thompson. Problem with him, he, he was making a routine inspection of his boat round about 7 o'clock UTC yesterday evening. He noticed a problem in the bow of the boat, the longitudinal beam uh, had uh, some delamination issues uh, and so the uh, team swung into action. Uh, initially Alex took some sleep. Uh, and uh, the team uh, put together a repair plan and now we understand that at the moment he has the boat downwind in uh, probably 10 knots from the north northeast. that's the breeze, relatively flat seas and the repairs uh, are underway. So this was uh, Alex Thompson's um, technical, manager, technical director, Ross, uh, Ross Daniel, his statement this morning said the inspection revealed some structural damage to a longitudinal beam at the front of the boat. The damage appears to be isolated to that area alone. It is yet unclear of what has caused the damage. There's been no instance of concern or on board the boat during the race so far. So no, uh, no collisions, no, um, no issues so far. Together with the structural engineers and naval, architectures, naval architects, we worked through the night to put together a full repair for, for plan for Alex. During this time, Alex took some rest on board in order to prepare to begin the repair work this morning, which he is doing. Alex has now put the boat in a safe position to manage the sea state in order to reduce movement on board while he carries out the repair. He has all the necessary materials on board, a detailed plan to follow and a team of world-class engineers advising him. We're therefore confident in his ability to complete the repair. So I think that's the key, uh, the key message this morning. They're confident in his ability to complete the repair. Our objective is to carry out the necessary repair swiftly and effectively in order to minimise the, the miles lost and resume racing. And the team promised that we will be updated through the, uh, through the course of the day. So that's the situation with uh, with Alex. I mean, a team which is, uh, dare I say it, uh, very experienced in dealing with these problems, hugely professional with a massive amount of experience uh, and uh, they are dealing with the issue. Johan Richom is our guest today, uh, winner of the uh, Route de Rum, double winner of uh, La Solitaire. Johan, uh, your, your thoughts on uh, Alex Thompson's situation just now? Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit sad, uh, really, uh, to see um, Alex, uh, you know, kind of stop for a while, uh, at least uh, for repairs, because we had a nice little trio in the lead, and it was uh, going to make from some uh, great racing in the south. But you know, things are not over, and uh, I hope we can uh, repair it uh, quite fast. I mean, you're you've been watching the weather very closely. What what's the the potential? Supposing it takes some 24 hours, for example, to complete a repair. What are the potential losses? Well, I've had a look at it since you asked, <laughs> and um, I've uh, I've looked at it, and uh, basically he's going to rejoin the chasing group with Arca, Paprec, and PRB Initiative and all that. So um, he's going to lose quite a bit because that will put him about a thousand miles behind uh, around Good Hope. Um, but I've been looking at the history as well, and uh, I don't know if you remember the last time he rabbit Cape Horn. Uh, 800 miles behind Armel, so I wouldn't um, call it game over, you know. Absolutely not. Um, just give us one minute. We're just going to look at the uh, the class monks, the rankings just now at midday. Thomas Riong uh, is leading the uh, fleet just now. Charlie Dallin has caught up just a little bit overnight. He's now 10.9 miles behind. Uh, Alex Thompson, as we said, uh, slowed uh, and repairing just now. He's lost. He's back to 120 miles behind at midday today, uh, French time. Uh, Jean Le Cam is still up there in fourth, uh, 258 miles behind the leader. Uh, Kevin Escoffier uh, in fifth, 285 miles behind. So just about 30 miles behind Jean Le Cam. Boris Herman, our German skipper, is at 329 miles behind uh, the leader. And... Uh, roughly keeping pace with Kevin Escoffier. Yannick Bestaven is in seventh, Louis Burton eighth, he's dropped, he was up in fourth uh, a couple of days ago. Sebastian Simon has passed uh, Sam Davis yesterday uh, and uh, Sam is in tenth place, about uh, 32 miles still behind Sebastian Simon. Looking at our internationals, well Giancarlo Padotti still solid in 13th uh, in the match. Uh, and further down the table then we see um, Alan Rura, who we spoke to today, in 18th. Uh, Pip here in 20th, uh, Didac Costa in uh, 21st, and they are still only a mile apart in terms of distance to finish. Then looking uh, further down the table, we have, uh, we have Miranda Merrin and uh, Ari Husela, 27th and 28th, 
uh, and uh, Kojira Shiraishi. Uh, he is making seven, seven and a half knots today uh, and is uh, pretty much back in the race. So, uh, Johan Rishom, then, just uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts about the race in general so far. It's been quite engaging uh, with uh, the loss, for example, of uh, Jeremy Bayou. Yeah, yeah, we know it's a war of attrition, this race, and uh, we know we're going to lose some boats before uh, they even got to South Africa. So, yes, it's sad to see um, the top two leaders uh, have, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the favourites have uh, broken their boats. Um, hopefully we will have them back in the game, but yeah, the, the, the race is, is, is very, you know, impressive quality wise right now because we had a very intense first week. And as we can see now, it's still, uh, it's still pretty full on and, uh, and they're going to be, uh, entering the South with a quite a nice little pack, uh, of, uh, of boats, you know, and, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to following this for the next, uh, month and a half, uh, around the, the Southern Oceans. I mean, some of these boats uh, are very, very new. We had the problem with uh, with the uh, COVID. The uh, boats lost uh, two transatlantics. Is this uh, what we should have been expecting in terms of losing some of these uh, newer boats? I think we're right around what we should have expected, really. Uh, so we knew some of them were going to break. We're going to see more breakages. It may not be the end of it. And, uh, you know, we know this. these new boats are really tough to sail. They're... Um, tough to engineer because they're really fast. They slam into the waves with a lot of power, which is most likely what happened to, to Alex. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard. I think, uh, you know, last time um, from what we know is that they, they took off the, they took the foot off the, the throttle a little bit in the south to kind of preserve the boats. And I think they will be looking for that, but, you know, from the scenario we're seeing with the two, uh, the two guys at the front um, going full steam, uh, you know, we might see some more problems on the boats. And, uh, and to, you know, to, you have to finish this race to, to be in the ranking, uh, just like any race, but even this one means a lot more. So you've got to preserve your boat for the long term. Indeed, I mean, the, some of these boats had had problems with the, with the bows and structures because of the, uh, the high impact of the boats crashing down when they're foiling and flying at these speeds. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when the boat started taking off, they were slamming the hull a little bit further back because the waves were hitting the back of the waves. But now that the boats are fully foiling some of the time, it's actually the bow that's hitting the wave in front and falling from two, three meter high at least sometimes. And the impact on the bows has been huge. And we know a lot of the boats in France have had some uh, reinforcements in the bow. We saw Coham in September doing about a two week um, repair job on their bow because uh, it, it was getting um, really broken. So it, it's, they're kind of discovering new problems all the time, you know, and um, all they're hoping for is that they've covered most of them by now. Indeed. Tell us about, uh, we've got a question from the internet. Uh, what's, the, what's your biggest problem that you've ever experienced single-handed that you've had to deal with? Uh, I mean, to be fair, single-handed, I think I've, uh, I haven't had that much uh, problem. I dismasted it three times, but three times double-handed. So uh, that made um, taking the mast out a lot easier. Uh, single-handed, I've been all right. I mean, I've all, all, always found um, an easy fix, I should say, uh, to my problems. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it can happen any time. And, and we, we always try and learn about, you know, composites, electronics, hydraulics, engine so that we're able to repair pretty much anything on the boat. And the other, uh, the other question from the internet is, uh, do you have aspirations to do the Vendée Globe? Oh, do I? <laughs> uh, I've been trying for the past two editions to, to be a part of it. Uh, I've had to pull the plug on my uh, 2020 uh, participation because I wasn't finding enough uh, funding. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about this race. I really hope I can do it one day. Uh, it's no doubt the greatest race there is. I mean, you can see racing with 34 boats around the globe. Nobody else does that. And uh, it makes it, you know, really interesting. And uh, I really want to be part of it next time, that's for sure. And, and on a day like this, and uh, when you see Jeremy at BU having problems, does that not put you off at all? It's kind of the scary part. The scary part is we know that there are going to be breakages and the management and the engineering that goes into these boats 
has to be really well managed. And it's tough. It's really tough to to make sure that everything is tested. And uh, and it's kind of interesting because you have to build the fastest boat, but you have to build the fastest boat that goes around the planet. So it's not because you build, you build the lightest boat or the fastest boat, you know, in in the Bay of Kibon or whatever, that you are going to win this race. You have to make sure that your boat is reliable, and that will always be true. It will be even, you know, more true as uh, boats get faster. You can't forget to make them reliable, and that what makes it interesting as well. It's not just a, a full-on racing project. It's a it's a global, global project with your team and your sponsor, and the way you want to race. Uh, you know, around the globe, uh, where you want to finish, what your objectives are. And that's, I find this really interesting. And I think one key example of that, as you say, the, the global project that's gone on in terms of reliability and optimization is Sam Davis. And we caught up with Sam uh, earlier on today on Initiatives Cur, and as usual, in great spirits. Good morning, Sam. Hello. How are you this morning? Good morning, Andy. I'm fine. I'm just uh, drinking my tea. <laughs> What do you have? It's uh, Earl Grey, uh, Earl Grey with the uh, milk. How are you this Sunday morning? Uh, very well, very well. Um, for me, on an issue show, it started with. Um, you can definitely tell that uh, we're coming out of the trade winds and into the kind of disturbed area that we're going to have to get across over the next few days. Um, it's not quite so, not quite so stable, uh, um, but still. Yeah, I was just asking whether you've learned anything specific about uh, sailing your boat since the start. Is there any anything you've learned to sail better? Uh, yeah, everything. I think when when you're sailing, and it's an amazing thing about sailing is that every day you sail, you learn something new. Um, and uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why we do this race as well. Um, but for me, it's also just getting used to living and on a boat that's moving this fast for such a long time. Um, definitely learning how to get the best out of my boat, um, while still trying to look after it as well. Um, uh, for me, I think that's... Uh, I was thinking about that the other day a bit differently from when I was sailing in the belt where it was full on foot on the floor uh, from start to finish and it was no And uh, Sam, you saw the news about Alex this morning. Uh, yeah, I did just briefly and um, uh, um, actually it's really disappointing for him. Um, it sounds like uh, he's the most important um, thing and uh, I guess we just have to wait and see um, He's in a good place to, to do that because it's very calm where he is and obviously um, we're very structured for it in time. So, so uh, Sam Davis, you on a project that I'm sure you would be happy with uh, to have that level, having a project that runs for four, uh, four years uh, and uh, gets you onto the start line in, a great, in great shape like Sam is. Yeah, for sure. She has a, a very good project. I, uh... I kind of follow uh, her, uh, you know, closely because she's uh, in Lorient here, where uh, a lot of the muckers are training. And yes, of course, seeing all these projects that have uh, some serious commitment from the sponsor and are very well managed and uh, keep on doing, you know, uh, great results is uh, kind of what I look for in the future, for sure. I mean, obviously, you have to look at uh, your situation and why you feel you you're maybe you maybe didn't get to start line. Have you got any kind of um, any thoughts in that d direction? What you have to do, or is it just uh, uh, so much uh, down to circumstances and who you meet at the right time? Yes, it's a little bit sad that it's like that sometimes, and that uh, you know you you have to have a bit of luck in the people you meet, but you've got to you know make sure you that luck happens as well. So I, I try and uh, and. Um, keep a very close contact uh, with a lot of people that are helping me uh, find the sponsors and um, hopefully it will work out someday. Uh, I've, you know, I've been showing that I can uh, handle projects, uh, do uh, manage boat builds and uh, do results on the Solitaire, which is probably 
one of the toughest uh, races there is. And uh, so I'm very confident with that. I've got a great, you know, uh, history, and uh, and uh, and I can uh, I can uh, easily um, be at the forefront of the Imoka racing, uh, you know, program. And I would love to do that in the coming years for sure. And compliments where they're due. I mean, you speak fantastic English. You're a true international. I try. I try. Uh, I, I'm currently running a, an English-speaking, you know, racing project with the, the Mercury Foundation. So it ha does help uh, practice my English a little bit because I've lost the uh, lost over the, the years. Listen, we'll come back to you in just one second. Let's uh, take a look, uh, fly through the fleet, and see how it's looking uh, as of today, as Sunday. So looking first of all at the front of the fleet, we can see the uh, easterly position for uh, Th Thomas Rion, Alex Thompson out to the west still, and Charlie Dallin catching up in the uh, more middle position. And this is uh, yesterday in this uh, northerly breeze is coming down the cold front. We had uh, probably 12, 15 knots. And then we know from Charlie Dallin overnight, it was very light. He was talking about uh, almost doldrums like conditions. Uh, and, but uh, Thomas Rion was going well, although we know he had to climb his mast last night. Looking back up through the fleet, you come into this uh, chasing pack, you still see uh, Jean Le Cam quite far to the uh, east. That seems to be his preferred track. You can see out in the left there, Louis Burton making a little bit of a jibe just to reposition down closer to the front. And this uh, flying through this group of three here, Benj or Benjamin Dutroux, Damien Sagan, Giancarlo Padotti side by side. Then further back up the track, there you can see uh, Alan Rura chasing Clarice Kremer, Isabel Josk. And then Stefan Le pretty much out on his own, a little bit uh, flying solo there. And then Didac Costa, Arno Boissier, Pip Hare and Manu Kozen all having a great race together. And so that's the fleet uh, as of uh, Sunday just now. Damien Sagan uh, um, is a sailor who's in that, in that pack. And uh, Johan Richom, I think a year ago you were drinking uh, Caipirinhas at the end of the uh, Transat Jacques Vabre with him. Yes, I was. I know Damien really well. We've done uh, three Transats together, three Jacques Vabre. Um, and the last one was in Imolka last year. You were right. Yeah, yeah, it, was, uh, it was good fun. He's you know, such a good sailor. And um, and I've been following him, yeah, for quite a few years, helping him out this year as well. I was on the start line until the, the four minute gun, pretty much, uh, helping him out on the boat. And it was uh, it was very impressive, you know, to live this uh, start of the Vendee from the inside. And I am uh, certainly following him closely, yeah. And what do you think of his race so far? He's going fantastically well and, and having a great race with that group. Yes, exactly. He's having a great race. He had a few problems in the first week uh, with his engine and stuff, so he had a to put uh, his, he his head into the, the mechanics uh, a little bit and uh, lost out there uh, before going around the, the tropical storm Teta. But uh, now he's back in, he's really fast. He's got a really great boat, I think, to the south. It's really fast there and went really safe. Um, I can accept, expect uh, to see him uh, improve on the ranking. We, we saw he was catching up with Benjamin Dutreux. Uh, he's gonna you know, probably uh, leave him behind uh, in the next few days. Uh, really, really good game in this, uh, you know, non furler uh, category, kind of. Um, and yeah, Benjamin Dutroux, I mean, the, the, the rookie from Les Sables de Lone. There's some dream stories out there, aren't there? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I know Benjamin quite well. I actually uh, kind of uh, passed him my uh, sponsor I had for the Vendee Globe, uh, and then uh, he lost it again. Um, because of the you know COVID crisis and, uh, and the economical uh, side of it, and um, he's had a very tough project, you know, having lots of technical problems that wasn't his fault. And um, I'm really happy to see him there. He's a really good sailor. He fought really hard to be there on the start line. Um, found the budget really late, and uh, I'm really happy for him. He's probably having a, a ball of the time, yeah. Indeed, we're watching very, very closely. Let's look, have a look at our uh, weather situation this Sunday. See, pretty complicated uh, for the leaders as they come into this pinch point. This is the weather. And the weather this Sunday then, looking first of all at our uh, first chart, which is a general situation right through the fleet. Starting off with Chiral back up here at the Canaries. Well, in uh, a fairly light uh, northeasterly trade wind, but uh, he's making reasonable progress. Next to look at is uh, DMG Mori. Uh, Kojiro Shiriashi. Now he's uh, going quite well just at the level 
of the uh, Cabo Verdes. Then working down, you see the doldrums are not quite as active as they were yesterday, but still this band of light, there's an unsettled breeze. This group just coming out. And then Stefan Le Raison here, very much out on his own, and then working, uh, working down the fleet as we go, looking now towards the front of the fleet. Um, so what we're seeing here is we still have the, the uh, South Atlantic high pressure here, and we're working down this curve. And this is a, uh, the cold front that we've been talking about for several days. And the leaders here, we have uh, Thomas Riong, Charlie Dallin, and Alex Thompson. Alex obviously slowed just now, but we're working down this cold front. Uh, and the question behind, for the boats behind us, whether they can follow them or not. And uh, we'll just look at a little, a little bit more detail at the routing today. Four in front for the leaders. This is um, Thomas Riong and this is uh, Charlie Dallin. So they're coming down, as I say, the rotation of the high. We have the, um, the northerly breezes here and a little bit more um, northwesterly as we come down. And the key thing is really this narrow corridor of breeze if we get too far this way, you see that the uh, high pressure on this side uh, is giving you upwind conditions, and this interface here really is very, very unsettled. So it's really all about jibing down the best of the breeze here, uh, and then getting down into the um, the easterly, the westerly, sorry, down here. That's the that's the target. So and it's all about sail selection and uh, jibing angles here. We're under spinnaker or jenniker, depending on the options. So that's uh, really the situation in terms of the routing for the, uh, for the leaders. Let me just get rid of that one. And just, just, this is just giving you the uh, cold front here in terms of the cloud cover. And you can see how clear it is along the, uh, along the edge of the cold front. And really, you want to be just outside of the cloud cover where the wind is slightly more stable and working down here. And just to, just to, to notice here two little things. In particular, Jean Le Cam uh, on Yes We Cam. Now, that's obviously the uh, daggerboard boat, no foils. He's keep taking a more um, easterly option. Uh, and, uh, and also, Benjamin Dutroux following his line. And over here, we can just see that Louis Burton and Buru Valley did a little bit of a jibe to reposition um, last night. So the next thing we're going to look at is uh, the big picture here. This is just giving it a little bit more detail. So I say the, the main high pressure system here, a little low here that we're targeting to come down um, the cold front onto the front of the low, and then try and get through this pinch point here, uh, and this high developing, and the, the highs squeezing together. So that's uh, that one. And then this is looking ahead now. And this is the problem here for these boats, uh, this group behind. We spoke with Sam Davis, and she was saying not quite sure what's going to happen for them, whether they're going to be able to follow the same path down the uh, cold front or whether the high just develops too much. And they're, what we're seeing just now is they're going to have to route down through the high. Um, and if you look at basically at the same point, linked out uh, and Charlie Dallin will be here in nice... Um, in nice uh, southerly breezes on the back of this low. And at the same time, you're going to see the separation back to this group. They'll be round about here. And the other thing for them is they're going to have to come so much further south to get into the westerlies. So that's the weather situation just now. Everything to play for. And it's going to be key to watch the two leading boats as they come through this pinch point. Well, that's it, our weather uh, weather marathon for the day. Uh, Johan Rishom, then just that, talk about that pinch point where the uh, the two leaders are coming into just now, uh, downwind jibing. What's uh, what's ahead for them? Yeah, they're going to try and keep themselves in that little corridor uh, where you uh, exactly what you explained between the front and the high pressure. Uh, it's going to be a lot of jibing, and we might see a little bit of difference if one of them has a spinnaker and the other doesn't. I'm not sure what sail they have on board. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an intense few days with quite a few jibes for them. Uh, not a very hard maneuver in 15 knots of wind, um, but then they're going to have yeah a massive lead on the other about a thousand miles is uh, if uh, everything goes right. So um, yeah, to me they're the only two that will get through that corridor. The other ones have to go through the high pressure or through the back of it on the west side, kind of. And um, and then uh, and down into the, the, the western winds. Um, so it's going to be it? an intense few days for all of them, uh, but very interesting for us to follow. Indeed, um, Yuan. Final question from the internet: Do you take a lucky charm on board when you go racing? 
I'm not, not very superstitious, um, but I'm big on food. If I don't have my chocolate, everything goes wrong. Indeed, how much chocolate? <laughs> At least a tablet a day, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I can't remember who it was, but there's somebody out there who's having a tablet a week. And it's like, come on. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know how they do that. Exactly. And one final question, obviously, who's going to win the rugby today? Uh, is it, that's not a question, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait and see. Anyway, listen, a real, yeah, yeah. listen, a real pleasure to have you. Do join us again over the course of the race, uh, Johan Richom. Thank you so much. Anytime. Thank you very much. So that's our show for today. We're just going to be watching uh, with bated breath to see how Alex Thompson uh, manages to uh, repair the Hugo Boss and get back into the race. Uh, meantime, join us tomorrow, the same time, the same place on our Vondi Globe Live.